Cindy Moon, Earth 616, Silk. Teenage Years. As a child, her parents found out that Cindy had an eidetic memory. Her mother wanted her to focus on her studies, while Cindy would rather continue playing on her school hockey team with her secret boyfriend, Hector Cervantes. When her mother found out, she was forced to go to the school field trip to General Tektronics and CIN told her she hated her. Sometime later, Cindy broke up with Hector since he was going to Boston College and she was going to Oxford University. When attending a public exhibition demonstrating the safe handling of nuclear laboratory waste materials, a spider irradiated by a particle accelerator used in the demonstration bit Peter Parker on the hand and fell from his hand, it then bit Cindy on her ankle before dying. The first manifestation of her powers happened when her uncontrollable organic webbing accidentally caused her to web up her parents. A man by the name of Ezekiel Sims came and took Cindy away. He trained Cindy in the use of her powers until he realized the totemic predator Morlin was tracking her. He then locked her away in a room that blocked Morlin's detection at the bottom of his tower to protect her from him. This bunker had years worth of food, books, and tapes on the outside world which Cindy watched every day. She knew the code to leave at any time but, knowing the consequences, she decided to stay put despite the horrible boredom. Release from the bunker. Cindy's story was revealed to Peter Parker 13 years later, when he was now the hero known as Spider-Man, after the orb unleashed several of the Watcher's secrets to the world. Overwhelmed by this revelation, he went to free Cindy. She tried to warn him about Morlin, but he opened the door anyway and she attacked him for dooming them to being hunted down by Morlin. Peter revealed that Morlin was dead, and after realizing she was free, Silk made an improvised costume of webs and told Spider-Man to call her Silk before heading to her parents' home. After realizing that her parents had moved, Spider-Man promised to help her find them. She asked him when Morlin died, but after he told her that he had died twice, she realized that he had already returned from the dead once and attacked him, telling him that he could return again. Morlin, who had indeed returned, sensed her liberation and started his greatest hunt. Cindy attacked him for wasting her sacrifice, pulling him with a webline and asking him if he could feel that they were all in danger. Peter realized that his spider sense was overloaded like it never was before. Silk pulled his mask up and they kissed. Almost immediately, the two began an extremely intimate relationship, surprising Anna at the apartment she shared with Peter. She felt threatened by the presence of Anna and told her forcibly to back off from Peter, though she later apologized. She helped Spider-Man against Electro and Black Cat when they attacked the television station that Peter was giving an interview at to promote his new humane superhuman prison. Silk saved Spider-Man from being unmasked by the Black Cat in live TV and escaped with him from the studio. Cindy later accompanied Peter to the demonstration of the technology to depower Electro, being held in Waterfront, which was sabotaged by the Black Cat. In their costumed identities, Peter and Cindy fought the villains. Silk saved Innocence from the machine gun Haywire and later protected Spider-Man and Electro from its explosion, which luckily depowered the villain. Cindy then joined the Fact Channel so such enormous information center would help her find her missing family. Spider-Verse while bickering with Spider-Man over the necessity of him remaining in New York, Silk was recruited by Spider-UK's team alongside him, Spider-Man 2099, Spider-Woman, and Spider-Girl. Upon realizing most of the alternate Spider-Men were versions of Peter, she tried to sense if she possessed the same attraction to any of them, but detected nothing from any of them aside from Kane, Peter's clone who was the avatar of the other. Instructed by Old Man Spider to remain behind, Cindy indignantly demanded an explanation as to why, and when none was provided impulsively followed through the portal. It was revealed that Cindy was the avatar of a powerful spider totem called the Bride, and her presence in conjunction with Kane's attracted Deimos, Brix, and Bora of the Inheritors, who killed several members of Superior Spider-Man's team and Old Man Spider. When Octavius accused her of getting his best soldiers killed, Cindy attracted the attention of Brix and Bora before jumping through a random portal, followed by Jessica Drew and Spider-Man Noir. Cindy's impulsiveness and naivety lead to Spider-Man Noir being severely injured, and her teleporter being damaged. Jessica swapped teleporters with her to evacuate her from Moonworld, and Cindy traveled to Earth-3145. Realizing the area was a nuclear wasteland, she made her way to Ezekiel's bunker and encountered the Benjamin Parker of that world, contacting the other spiders to let them know she found a new safe haven. Upon learning that Jessica had been stranded on Moonworld due to sacrificing her damaged teleporter, Cindy snuck away to rescue her, accompanied by Spider-Gwen. However, their rescue attempt was kiboshed when Cindy's teleporter was destroyed in an altercation with multiversal pirates, stranding them on Moonworld. Cindy protested that none of their hardships were her fault, but was berated by Spider-Woman for her incompetence and lack of responsibility. Their argument was interrupted when Verna, Brix, and Bora attacked to capture the bride. 
Upon learning Cindy was in danger, the surviving spiders, including a now redeemed Karn, went to Loom World for a final battle to save her and Benji. Morlan cut Cindy's palm, severing the bride's connection to the web of life and preventing new spider totems from arising through chance. After the inheritors were defeated and Master Weaver was killed by Otto Octavius, Morlan, enraged, attacked Spider-Man to kill him for ruining their plans. Spider-Man created a portal to Earth-3145, then escaped thanks to Silk, who told him that, since they were bitten by the same spider, she could sense him across the multiverse. As the spider army rested for a few minutes, Cindy told Peter his pheromones were arousing her, but he replied with Cindy, Honey, it's been a really long day. After recuperating, the spiders opened a portal to Earth-982 to send Mayday home. On Loom World, the remainder of the spider army bid their goodbyes. Karn realized someone was tampering with the web of life and destiny, and they rushed to the web to find Otto Octavius hacking at the web with Morlan's dagger. When Karn shouted that he could destroy the multiverse, Otto sneered that he was aware of his destiny and rejected his fate, revealing that he figured out that Peter was from the future. Otto battled with Spider-Woman and Spider-Girl, stating that by destroying the web, he's giving them free will. When Anya saw that there was totemic script on the dagger, Otto attempted to stab her before being punched away by Peter. Otto sneered that Peter was a coward for ganging up on him, but Peter pointed out that he did the same thing as the founder of the Sinister Six. Taking advantage of the distraction, Anya immobilized Otto's arm and read that there would always be a master weaver at the center of the Great Web. Silk recalled that the inheritors referred to her as the spinner at the center of the web and wondered if her destiny was to take the weaver's place, while Otto again tried to stab Anya, snapping that his world needed him and that he was the greatest Spider-Man ever. Peter and Jessica knocked him back, and Anya secured the dagger, reading that anyone could take the place of the current weaver, but only death can free the weaver from their sacred obligation. Silk, having spent most of her life trapped in one room, balked at the idea of spending the rest of eternity trapped again, and Karn commiserated with her. As Peter and the other spiders fought Otto, Karn noticed a slot that fits the prongs of the spear he made as a child, which acted as a key to open the mechanism. When Silk asked how he could possibly be in two places at once, Karn stated that the flow of time differs in Earth-001, using the coexistence of Peter Parker and Otto Octavius as an example. When Anya stated that only a spider totem should be able to repair the web, Karn stated that he's consumed enough totems for their essence to enable him to take the weaver's place, donning the weaver's mask and stating that this shall be his penance and hopefully salvation. Peter defeated Otto, who feigned surrender but put Anna on a 100-day standby. Anya asked Karn if he could repair the damage done by the inheritors and Otto, and Karn stated that, in time, he could fix the web, but that in the meantime all the spiders' connections to it would be diminished, weakening their spider senses. As Karn prepared to return him to the past, Otto swore revenge on him, which Karn dryly retorted that he already got by killing his future self. As Otto swore that he'd find a way to survive, Peter shoved him through the portal and he reappeared in the aftermath of the Chronoton implosion that time displaced him in the first place, his memory of the recent events erased. Karn remarked that weaving and repairing the Great Web was new to him, but that the existence of Earth-616 had been stabilized. However, he was unable to open a portal to Spider-UK's dimension, Earth-833, discovering that it was somehow destroyed. Spider-UK revealed that incursions between dimensions have been erasing entire realities, including his own, and laments that he wasn't able to help his fellow corpsmen face the danger. The Earth-616 spiders console him, reminding him that without his efforts, they wouldn't have stood a chance against the Inheritors. Silk asks if the Inheritors would be able to survive on Earth-3145 without draining the essence of spider totems, and Karn remarks that his family can subsist off the life force of any animal and that Earth-3145 is teeming with mutant spiders for them to feed off of. When the main spiders of Earth-616 returned home, Silk realized that they had been gone for days and hoped the fact channel hadn't fired her. Jessica remarked that, as his own boss, Peter doesn't need to worry about such things. Peter corrected her, stating that for a long time he didn't feel ready to run his own company, but that, after leading the spider army, he now felt ready for anything. Finding her parents and last days. After the battle with the inheritors, she refocused on finding her parents with the resources of the Fact Channel News, while beginning a career of crime fighting, starting by fighting a new villain named Dragonclaw. She soon found that her parents' record had been erased, but this didn't turn her off and she kept gathering clues to their whereabouts, even going back to her old bunker, where she created an evidence board. Unknown to Silk, during all this, two mysterious figures were watching her every time she was in the bunker. In her investigations, she fought a skull-like robot created by Hydra and destroyed it. In the process, she also ran into her high school boyfriend, who was now engaged. She later had another run-in with Black Cat, who defeated her in combat. She also helped Dragonclaw to get his daughter back with the help of Spider-Man. 
However, Black Cat defeated her in combat once more and she was kidnapped by the repairman, who revealed that he worked for the people who had her family. She attempted to get information from him, but Black Cat arrived and severely beat him up before he was killed by the collapse of the building. Silk was angered by this and attacked the cat, leading her to offer Cindy a chance to join her organization. Silk refused and initially gained the upper hand against Black Cat, but she managed to escape nonetheless. During the final incursion, Cindy received information from J. Jonah Jameson about a man named James Park, who was involved with the Goblin Nation and was suspected to be Cindy's long-lost brother Albert Moon. She went off to find him, but however due to the incursion, she had to save people from getting killed and injured. She rushed to the hospital and discovered her brother in room 407 and hugged him in a teary goodbye as Earth-616 and Earth-1610 collided, killing them and everyone else in both universes. All new, all different. When the universe returned to life, so did Silk and all of its inhabitants, with no memories of their temporary demise. Over the course of eight months, Cindy got her life back together and she even got promoted, but her parents were still missing and her brother had no memory of what had happened to them. She also started working for Black Cat as a supervillain, but this was revealed to be a cover, as she was working with S.H.I.E.L.D. to find her parents. During an adventure with other Spider-Woman, Cindy learned that her counterpart from Earth-65, home of Spider-Gwen, was the cause of Gwen's powers, and she had traveled to Prime Earth to steal and reverse-engineer the technology of the greatest minds of the universe for warmongering. Upon confronting Cindy-65 with Spider-Gwen, Gwen lost her powers from Cindy-65's nanobots and Cindy Prime's name as Silk was tarnished as a villain, so much so that her S.H.I.E.L.D. handler Mockingbird thought she actually did the crime she was accused of. After Black Cat's freeing of Silk from a S.H.I.E.L.D. prisoner convoy, Cindy chose to stay with Black Cat, Kant. Undercover, and later went back to help Gwen and Jessica win the boss fight with Cindy-65, who utilized a gauntlet which replicates the abilities of the universe's most formidable superhumans. Cindy, as a result of her Earth-65 counterpart's defamation, earned more of Black Cat's trust to gain deeper intelligence of her criminal operation, still intending to complete her mission and get whatever S.H.I.E.L.D. had on her family's whereabouts. The End of the Search she eventually saved her parents, who were in the negative zone looking for a cure to her powers, and, later, she joined her boss on a trip to San Francisco, where she created a new alias to investigate the mysterious new you, also donning a new costume inspired by traditional Korean dresses. Her silkworm identity only lasted for a mission though, as she went back to her old codename when she returned to New York. The day after the mission, she decided to quit the fact channel, because she didn't want to be a journalist anymore, and accepted Mockingbird's invitation to start attending SHIELD Academy. After Norman Osborn bonded himself to the Carnage symbiote becoming the Red Goblin, he heavily injured Peter, making Peter contact Cindy and instructing her to watch over his loved ones. After Red Goblin wounded Human Torch in Clash, she along with Miles, tried to fight him, however, Red Goblin made quick work of them and left them with intense damage. Then Flash Thompson as Anti-Venom arrived to fight Norman, but was forced to keep the fallen heroes from dying, while Red Goblin injured Flash. After Flash took them to the hospital, he used his symbiote to remove the symbiote pieces left in their bodies from Norman, who intended to use them to kill Peter's loved ones. New Agents of Atlas After Cinder's forces overwhelmed and took Korea, Cindy went undercover as a local Korean and found a way to disguise Amadeus Cho as a Muspelheim soldier to free the captive Luna Snow. When Braun was fighting Cinder, Arrow, Wave and Luna used the Black Bifrost to travel to in order to decrease the temperature, and are then transported to northern China, where Shang-Chi began training them for their fight. Upon Cinder arriving to northern China, along with a captured Braun, Silk sneaked up on Cinder's dragon and freed Braun who caused Cinder to crash land, allowing the rest of the team to ambush her. Following the sacrifice of Pele and the Monkey King, the Cinder tried to escape, but the team and Captain Marvel were able to defeat her at the Great Wall of China. Afterwards, they then began capturing and escorting the remaining fire goblins in Shanghai. When the Big Nguyen Company began merging the different Asian cities into the city of Pan with portals, the agents protect Mike Nguyen from wyverns. After that, he offered the agents to become the new protectors of Pan, along with Protector, but they refused. After saving some Madripoor refugees from sea serpents, Protector came to them and offered to work together in finding Mike's secret. After, finding out that Nguyen had captured an Atlantic sea serpent in order to harvest its scales, which were used to form the portals, they tried to free the serpent, but the city was then attacked by an enraged Namer. Order of the Web Amid her own affairs, Cindy shared a vision of Peter Parker dying by a disfigured and bandaged demon. When Julia Carpenter warned an unknown force had brought Spider-Man into conflict with Sin Eater, Cindy became a founding member of the Order of the Web, racing to save Spider-Man from Norman after the temporary abatement of Sin Eater. Cindy then witnessed Norman's antagonism with Peter about Gwen, and saw Peter toss Norman out for Sin Eater as they escaped. 
As Spider-Man's sacrifice of Norman was a deal sealed with Kindred to be rid of the villain, Cindy was possessed in consequence by a demon sent by Kindred to destroy Peter. Under the control of Kindred, Cindy and the rest of the Order began wrecking havoc across the city and even battling the new warriors. Arriving at the Brooklyn Bridge they attacked innocent bystanders and also attacking themselves, causing destruction all around, forcing Peter to make a deal with the demon to free his friends. Released from Kindred's control, the Order were helped by Doctor Strange to find the demon and made their way to his cemetery. There, they fought Sin Eater, who was augmented by Morland's power's powers. After their victory, however, Kindred captured them and forced them into being dinner guests for his party. Immobile and vulnerable, Cindy's life alongside everyone else's was saved by Mary Jane Watson's timely petition of self-sacrifice and Norman Osborne's arrival. Their successful entrapment of Kindred allowed for their escape, thus concluding the ordeal by going home to recuperate. New Beginnings With no more world threats to handle, Cindy finally got her own apartment with her brother as he attended college. Cindy again focused on her journalism career, getting working under Jonah again at Threats and Menaces. After publishing her first story, she had to protect Jonah from thugs trying to intimidate him, leading Silk to become his bodyguard as they investigated the situation further. From a piece of evidence, Cindy deduced a connection to the global tech company Fujinet. After stopping a cat demon from killing another gang as Silk, she found another Fujinet connection. Failing to get the remaining gangs to form a truce, she confided what she could in her new therapist, Max. Then, she got an interview with the head of Fujinet, Saya Ishii, but was surprised when she revealed her awareness of Cindy's silk identity before Cindy was forced to leave. Later, she met Silvermane in secret as a reporter and learned from him that he was Saya's father. After he told her Saya's origin and upbringing, he was planning to silence Cindy, but she managed to escape and get home, where she found an injured Saya in her room petitioning for help. Although hesitant at first, Cindy begrudgingly agreed to help Saya. With her usual team of partners occupied, she contacted her friend Lola so she could get Cindy and Saya into the United World Defense Council building for their tech labs. Once equipped, Cindy and Saya went up against Kasha and worked together to defeat the cat demon and her demon godmaster. In the end, however, Saya killed Kasha, highly upsetting Cindy, who was against murder. She then tried to bring her to justice, but Saya had paid the surviving gangs to stall Silk and managed to escape with her therapist Max, secretly Saya's brother. Not wanting to let the setback hinder her, Cindy filed her story before going out to a bar with Albert and Lola to relax. Age of the Witch With Silk's increasing popularity on social media, Cindy started to question her place in the world. Dr. Sinclair, her therapist, suggested that Cindy take a break from being a superhero to explore who she was outside the suit. When the Met was broken into, Cindy learned that the tomb of Amanyo, a Korean shaman, had been stolen along with a few soldier statues, and that an increasing number of young influencers had aged massively within a short period of time. Sensing a link between the incidents, Cindy delved further into her investigation whilst she juggled additional classes. She took her coding teacher, Ivan, to Luna Snow's concert after being invited by her, and assisted the superhero in taking down the reanimated statues that had infiltrated the venue. Afterwards, she declined Luna's offer to help, but forgot that she had left Ivan behind. Whilst helping Rafferty to unpack at the latter's apartment, Cindy spotted the manual present in the livestream of food blogger Amir World, but arrived too late to avoid Amir's life force being sucked away. She confronted the manio, but ended up being turned into an old lady after the manio exploited Cindy's webs being part of her to siphon her youth. Forced to retreat, she found that Albert failed to recognize her in her current state, and felt even more depressed as she failed to stop a couple of thieves. As Silk, Cindy checked in with Jameson, as she was technically still his bodyguard. He sensed Cindy's poor mood, and advised her to simply focus on the things that made one happy in the present, rather than stressing about the future. Just then, she received an urgent call from Dr. Ferguson, who informed her that the Manyo had returned to the Met and was in the process of conducting a ritual. Getting Jonah's aid to drive to the venue, Cindy managed to trick the Manyo into getting close enough and destroyed her necklace which held her powers, restoring Cindy and the other victims to their original selves. Afterwards, Cindy went to apologize to Ivan for abruptly ditching him and sought his understanding that her life could be eventful. She gave him a kiss and promised to go with him on another date, coming to the conclusion that being Silk is what made her happy and served as her purpose. Personality Having spent about 10 years in isolation, Cindy has a borderline social anxiety disorder, giving difficulties being in some social settings. However, not wanting to be alone anymore, Cindy compels herself to make new friends, such as when she was at the Fact Channel under J. Jonah Jameson. Her heroic nature is part of her intrinsic drive to help people and knowing the feeling of being alone. 
With her time as Silk and building relations as herself, Cindy has learned to cope with her social anxiety by maintaining a regimen of work, therapy, and interpersonal connections. Attributes Powers Spider Physiology, Silk possesses the proportionate powers of a spider, granted to her from an irradiated black widow spider, Latrodectus, which bit Cindy Moon that was apparently already mutated from prior exposure to certain frequencies of radiation and received a final, lethal dose during Moon's attendance of the exhibition. The radioactive, complex mutagenic enzymes in the spider's blood that were transferred at the time of the bite triggered numerous body-wide mutagenic changes within Moon, granting her superhuman strength, speed, toughened flesh, and numerous arachnid-like abilities. Unlike Spider-Man, she has less superhuman strength than him, but she also possesses more agility than him and an advanced spider sense far more sensitive than other totems. She possesses the ability to produce organic webbing from her fingertips. Her powers include While crawling, Silk's exposure to the mutated spider venom induced a mutagenic, cerebellum-wide alteration of her engrams resulting in the ability to mentally control the flux of interatomic attraction, electrostatic force, between molecular boundary layers. This overcomes the outer electron shell's normal behavior of mutual repulsion with other outer electron shells and permits the tremendous potential for electron attraction to prevail. The mentally controlled subatomic particle responsible for this has yet to be identified. This ability to affect the attraction between surfaces is so far limited to Silk's body, especially concentrated in her hands and feet, and another object, with an upper limit of several tons per finger. Superhuman Strength Silk possesses superhuman strength enabling her to press lift several tons, though she possesses less strength than Spider-Man. This is probably due to approximate strength based on her lighter mass. Superhuman Speed Silk is capable of running and moving at speeds that are far beyond the natural physical limits of the finest human athlete. Her speed even surpasses that of Spider-Man as shown when she outmaneuvered him during their first encounter. Superhuman Stamina, Silk's advanced musculature produces less fatigue toxins during physical activity than an ordinary human. This allows her to exert herself physically for much longer periods of time before fatigue begins to impair her. Superhuman Durability, Silk's body is physically tougher and more resistant to some types of injury than the body of a normal human. Her body is more resistant to impact forces than anything else. She can withstand great impacts, such as falling from a height of several stories or being struck by an opponent with super strength that would severely injure or kill a normal human with little to no discomfort. Superhuman agility, Silk's agility, balance, and bodily coordination are all enhanced to levels that are far beyond the natural physical limits of the finest human athlete. Her agility is more advanced than Spider-Man's. Superhuman equilibrium, Silk possesses the ability to achieve a state of perfect equilibrium in any position imaginable. She seems able to adjust her position by instinct, which enables her to balance herself on virtually any object, no matter how small or narrow. Superhuman reflexes, Silk's reflexes are similarly enhanced and are possibly about 40 times greater than those of an ordinary human due to her and Spider-Man being bitten by the same spider. In combination with her spider sense, the speed of her reflexes allows her to dodge almost any attack even gunfire if far enough. Silk Sense, Silk possesses an extrasensory danger or Silk Sense which warns her of potential immediate danger and links with her superhuman kinesthetics, enabling her to evade most any injuries, unless she cognitively overrides her automatic reflexes. Her Silk Sense is more advanced than the Spider Sense of Spider-Man and other spider totems, it allows her to react significantly faster in combat, has superior range, and can even sense the identity of an attacker before a fight begins, however, while her sense is sharper, it is often out of sync with time and generally very fickle and unreliable. Organic webbing, she has the ability to organically produce her own silk webbing from glands within her forearms, possibly limited by her body's health and nutrition. These organic webs have many of the same properties as Spider-Man's artificial webbing, but can also be woven into clothing. She releases her organic webbing through her fingertips. Claws, her ability to spin webs with her fingertips also allows her to form claw-like extrusions from them. Superhuman tracking, due to her and Peter being bit by the same spider, Silk can find and sense Spider-Man anywhere in the multiverse. Abilities Gifted intelligence Eidetic memory Skating Weaknesses Her Silk sense seems to be out of whack. She was alerted one night when a girl was left by friends after a party and was crying. Her sense has also continuously fired off when there seem to be no immediate danger making it very sensitive to the point where she will ignore it even when she is in direct danger. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.